Hey gang, today finds us on the Keweenaw Peninsula, the upper peninsula of Michigan, Lake Superior, just to the north here, the town of Calumet, the little town of Calumet, historic town, copper mining town. This is copper mining country, and as you can hear in the background, there's still a lot of activity going on here. Although the Tamarack Mine, which is where we're at, it closed down a long time ago, and we're gonna take a walk to the cap, the hole, and the reason we're doing that is there is the remains still to this day, it's a memorial now, of a little girl, Ruth Ann Miller, who lost her life here. And I'm going to tell you the story. I want to thank and give a shout out to Tracy Rademacher, who shared this story a while back. Now, the history here is very interesting. Like I said, a lot of copper mining throughout the Upper Peninsula. Very high concentrations of copper ore here were found a long, long time ago. And if you go to northern Wisconsin, like where we're at, Iron County, got a lot of copper there too. But this area was really concentrated. Now, if you go back, the... Native Americans would mine copper here from small pits. Now we're going back to 3000 BC. They were mining copper here. So it's very amazing. And there's a lot of rich history, especially at this particular mine. Now there's nothing much left but this landfill. It was 1882 when the first shaft here at the Tamarack Copper Mine was made. It all began with a hunch of the mine foreman. It was quite interesting because he, where we're going, right up here, he was standing right here and he said to the other men, he said, there's copper down here right under my feet. And he felt it. And he, it was literally right below his feet. He was right, and it was one of the richest deposits that they found up here. In fact, they did it a little differently. Now, normally, kind of like gold mining, you, follow, you find a vein and then you follow it, and it's kind of on a horizontal angle, right? But in this case, he's like, it's right below my feet. So they went straight down like a mile. Can you imagine a mile straight down a shaft? That's right, that's what they did. And they kept drilling and digging and drilling and finally they hit it. They hit the, the mother load and they started taking a lot of copper out of here. There would be five shafts that would be put here, drilled here, but by the late 1930s, things were tapped out and these shafts were abandoned. Now look over here, I just spotted something. I haven't walked back here yet, by the way. We're gonna do this all together. But I found something interesting here and I wonder if that's associated with the mine. Let's take a look. So yeah, shaft number four, we're going right around the corner here to shaft number four. I wonder if this has anything to do with it. Concrete chimney, so to speak. Interesting. I wonder if any of you can tell us what this is, or I should say was. Definitely old. Well, as I was alluding to, this shaft that we're walking to holds a terrible story. You know, when they capped, when they capped these mines off, if they even did back in those days, and we're going back to 1966, when this happened, there was a cap here, but it was in terrible shape. 
It was cracked and crumbling after decades of erosion not being maintained. And they did have a barbed wire fence around it, which was tumbling down and in disrepair. And it was in the summer, the summer afternoon, July 16th, 1966. Little Ruth Ann Miller, who lived here, she was playing with her older brother Gary, 10 years old, and they were along with another little boy right here in these trees. They were probably playing hide go seek because Ruth had seen a good hiding spot up here, this spot that we're walking to, and she went in there. It was no doubt probably overgrown with weeds and bushes. And she snuck into that barbed wire fence, the tumble down fence, got in there, and she hid. As it turned out, she hid right at the base of the cap, the crumbling cap with big holes in it. And she shouted out to the boy, she said, you can't find me. You can't find me. And those were the last words that they heard from little Ruth Ann because it was then that she lost her balance and she tumbled down through one of those cracks and into the endless mine shaft. She was gone. Now of course the boys ran back, they told the parents, the whole town came running right here out to the rescue. No doubt at first all they could do was call down to her, down the mine shaft, and all they could do was listen, but there would be no return voice. They put a pretty big rescue operation together. It was quickly assembled, and now the mining officials were on the scene. They were all crowded around this very spot where we are right now. Equipment, people, ambulance, doctors. Miners, workers, everybody from the town was here praying and hoping. Then the news came from the mining officials. They said, well, although the mine shaft does go a mile down, it is plugged. And everybody was like, wait, that's, that gives us hope. What do you mean it was plugged? How far down? Then the bad news came, well, it's pretty far down, it was plugged, and the worst news was, on top of that, they estimated there was about 200 feet of water. 200 feet of water, way down there. Well, the hope was maybe, maybe she fell on a ledge, maybe she was caught on something, maybe, you know, there's all sorts of debris. When they tried to take the cap away, it crumbled apart and pieces fell down. So it, it just was like, it seemed hopeless. And after three days, after three days of, of valiant efforts, I mean, people went down this mine shaft. They risked their lives, but nothing. Who knows where Ruth Ann is down there, but she is down there somewhere because she was never found. And thus, the whole town went into mourning. Everyone went home. There was no more hope. And, of course, now that, now that this had happened, they put a proper fence in, they put a proper cap in. And it did affect the news. This, the news here went national, international. And here ahead, you see, you see the fence, you see the spot, this is it. This is where it happened, guys. Let's take a look. Now again, I have not been out here to scope this out. I just saw it on Google Earth. And I'm kind of just looking here at some artifacts. Not sure what this would have been. Maybe 
boy, I couldn't say, you know, this looks like a base structure for, all right, tell me you minor types, see these big bolts? I am guessing that this was part of the base structure of the mine. So what you see here, that's the mine hole back behind in the square fence. And I'll tell you that almost surely that, you know, the, the, ca the cables would come up to a tower and then there would be the steel. I've seen these before. You've got the steel, you know, the steel tower here. And that was probably, that's probably the, the base foundation for the back. You know, it's angling up. They angle up and then they have a, all like a structural steel frame, cast iron in those days. So I'm guessing that is still there. That's what that is. Now they've made a really nice memorial here. They never found Ruth Ann's body, but we know she's down there. And here's a nice tribute, the little story of Ruth Ann. And you also see here, it says, in 1988, Ruth Ann's mother was granted her wish to be with her daughter when her ashes were interred on this site. And yeah, we do have her picture, Ruth Ann's mother. So let's take a look at this shrine. Your life's brief journey ended at this deep and lonely mine, but oh, little Ruth Ann Miller, it is now a cherished shrine. Well, Ruth Ann's mom, Ruth Vivian Taylor, passed in 1988. She was 53 years old. And I see that we can't get in. Not that we need to get in, it's locked. But as we look down here, this is where it says there's a, uh, there's a little plaque there for her mom. I'll see if I can zoom in on it for you. Kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can come over here. Yeah. Now her brother Gary. He remember he was ten years old when this happened. He died last year, 2022, in February. And his ashes. He was cremated, so his ashes are here, somewhere. I don't see a marker for him, and I'm going to say yet because, you know, these things take time. But there's the memento. There's the memento. There's the stone. Some beautiful flowers. I'd love to put the yellow rose in there. But I think what I'll do, I did bring one for mom and... One for little Ruth. There's a beautiful wreath here. I think I'll just maybe put them both in, in the wreath. See how that works out. Yeah. It's the least we can do. Clip these in here so they don't fall out. There. Okay. So, yeah. Now, there's a big concrete. Let's come up here. There's a big concrete pad here, but I think the actual, it's hard to say where the actual shaft is it could be just beyond where her I'm guessing this is it right here it's good they have this fence and you can see that this this is 
This, I believe, is the actual, the actual shaft, and that is, that even looks like it's crumbling away a little bit. Well, interesting, very sad story. Interesting to see the cap. Just wondering what they just think of all that copper and that un if you th if you think about it that under this cap this there's a hole there that goes over a mile deep it's just hard to fathom can you imagine how dangerous that was and and Michigan there are tens of hundreds of mines and they probably left some of them open to this day. There's probably still some dangerous mines. Well, this did have an effect regionally, not only Michigan, but I'm sure in many other places. Like I said, it made headlines and it created a push to securely cap the abandoned mines that were around in those days after this happened. You know, like when accidents happen and people get on the stick. These abandoned mines today still pose significant health and safety risks, which maybe this, this episode and Ruth's Memorial here remind us to not be latent and be diligent. The risks include this cap that's here, that one that you see here could still collapse. Thank God there's a fence here. You could have falls, drownings. There are explosives down there that may not have been detonated from misfires that could go up. And I'd say the big thing are the lethal gases. Who knows? You go down there, you are taking a big risk. You are taking a huge risk. So I'm talking about the other ones. Apparently a 1995 inventory of abandoned mines here, this area, part of Michigan, show that there were more than 2,000 mine shafts or other openings in the surface that exist. 2,000. Can you imagine? 2,000. Yeah, that's, this, this is frightening. You know, when I look at this, at that, that does not look good. And this one's in good shape by comparison. Still a danger, guys. Anybody in Michigan, call your town if you know of one. God forbid there are still accidents and deaths happening from, from these abandoned mines. You know, it's curiosity killed the cat. You want to go see, I know it's interesting. All right. Ruth Ann Miller, 1958 to 1966, a short life. Hopefully Ruth will always be remembered. Rest in peace, Ruth Ann Miller and Mom Ruth and Gary. Rest in peace.